Minnesota Vikings have made their first big splash of free agency, and that is Houston Texans edge rusher Jonathan Gennard. What do we make of the signing? Does that mean Daniil Hunter's gone? And what are the ripple effects that are going to form what is going to go on with the Minnesota Vikings defense here moving forward? Welcome to a special bonus episode of The Real Forno Show. by Tyler Fornis, the managing editor of USA Today's Vikings Wire, writer for the College Football Network, publisher of Substack Run In Shooter, host of The Good, The Bad, and The Hungry on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network, as well as a founding member of Vikings First and Skull. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a special episode of The Real Forno Show. I'm your host, Tyler Fornis, and it is a very, very busy time. So we are constantly going and going and going and going. And as you see up in the top right corner, he is producer Dave. And the Vikings made a splash within, I believe, the first half hour of free agency by agreeing to terms with Houston Texans edge rusher Jonathan Grenard. Now, this is just coming in as well. The Vikings signed Grenard for four years, $76 million, average annual value of $19 million, $42 million guaranteed. And Grenard has been a starter for the Texans for multiple years. And this past season had a true breakout. And we're going to kind of talk about some of the context behind the breakout because I think that's important. But Dave, we talked about Dorrance Armstrong Jr., the edge rusher who was a backup for the Dallas Cowboys. He just got $15 million a year from the Washington Commanders. Now he's going to play for Dan Quinn, who he played for multiple seasons for the Dallas Cowboys. But I thought that was notable in the fact that Grenard only got like $4 million more at an average annual value. I think that's, that's noteworthy, but let's talk Grenard. Let's talk big picture, instant reactions. Dave, what did you think? I think it's a good pickup. He's a young up and comer. He's displayed traits both in his second year and then last year in his fourth year in the league. I hope he tackles better, but when it comes to pass rush and run defense, he's been outstanding. So it's going to be a good, like I said, if we're getting somebody this early in the game, a good cornerstone piece to move on forward from. Oh, absolutely. This is definitely a piece where let, let's just be real. I don't think he's better than Daniel Hunter, but when you look at some of the context behind bringing in Grenard versus re-signing Daniel Hunter, and there's a lot of merit to bringing in Grenard in lieu of Hunter. And it's tough because I don't want to see Hunter go, but getting a guy like Grenard, I think was really pivotal in trying to form this Minnesota Vikings roster and trying to really help fortify that edge rusher position. And I think Grenard is a really capable player. I'm really excited to really dive in depth into the film over the next couple of days, try and figure out what the Vikings are going to be doing here and how they're going to deploy Grenard, how they're going to use him and what kind of true skill sets he does have. But let's kind of go over some of the basics. Look, I watched Grenard at the university of Florida. He was only there for one year, 2019, but he was an excellent pass rusher. And he was not just a pass rusher, as Dave mentioned, a good run defender did a little bit of everything for the Florida Gators and did it with consistency. And I think that's a really important factor when you're having these conversations. What do they do? How well do they do it? And how consistent are they with it? And Grenard showed that he balled out of the senior bowl, became a third round pick of the Houston Texans. They obviously had some struggles over the course of their time. Um, Grenard did in only 414 snaps, 215 them pass rushing in 2021. 27 pressures, eight sacks. He only had 167 pass rush snaps. I believe some of that was injury related in 2022, two sacks and 11 pressures. So he had a little bit of a dip, but this past year, only 440 pass rush snaps, 697 overall. So that's a good number for a defensive lineman. Now guy like Daniel Hunter last year was playing like 70 snaps a game. That is not something you want to see consistently you'd rather have a little bit of a rotation, have those guys play around 70% of snaps instead of 90 because it keeps them fresher longer into the season. And you don't necessarily have to worry about as much wear and tear in a theoretical sense. 
So 700 pass rush snaps, and especially with how that Texans team was structured, they had multiple guys. They kind of rotated some in and out, and they gave guys real rest. So 440 pass rush reps, 53 pressures, and 14 sacks. Here's why this matters more than it would for other players. The Texans didn't blitz. They had a blitz rate of around 20%. The Vikings had an incredibly high blitz rate. I think they were blitzing around 50% of the time by the time it was all said and done at the end of the season. If you're only blitzing about 20% of the time, one out of every five plays, that doesn't necessarily mean they're all pass rush plays. They could be run blitzes. So theoretically, let's say they're only blitzing 15% of pass rushes. You got to do a lot of work in a four-man front like the Texans run in order to be able to generate pressure. And Grenard was able to do that. In ESPN's pass rush win rate, he was sixth in the National Football League uh, in that metric. Now, pass rush win rate is a little skewed because you have to win within 2.5 seconds. And a guy like Daniil Hunter gets a lot of his wins late in the rep. And he is able to really play contain and then be able to get to the quarterback. So I think that metric is a little bit skewed towards a guy who's a much more quicker style pass rusher, which is what Grenard is. But it's still a fantastic metric to kind of look at and see, hey, this guy can get to the passer. And he's got more than capable size. He's 6'3", 263. So he's going to have a similar but not identical build to what Daniil Hunter and DJ Wanham were. He looks the part, and the metrics look good. Look, it's not a perfect signing. You're taking a little bit of a risk. I, I kind of relate this back to when the Vikings signed Everson Griffin to that first contract extension. Five years, $40 million. He had never really started a game. And... When you hadn't and you haven't actually started a game and you get that kind of contract, because let's remember that was a big contract when he signed it. I believe that was 2013 because they had just gotten rid of Jared Allen and that that's a big risk to take, but it ended up paying off in a big way. The Vikings are taking a similar ish risk with Grenard, except Grenard has a lot more production than Everson Griffin did, but Griffin had those absolute freak athletic traits. Um, Mac attack said he ran a four, eight, look the four, eight, whatever, what's the 10 yard split. That to me is what matters the most. And he gets off the ball quickly and he's able to bend the edge and win in multiple facets. 14 sacks is not a mistake. If you play, get 14 sacks in a D'Amico Ryan style defense, where you're not generating a lot of ec- external pressure, you're not generating pressure from blitzes or being super unique with a lot of scheme. You're winning. And Grenard being able to win with that form of consistency to me tells me that that's going to be able to translate, especially when you give him help with blitzes at coming into Brian Flores' defense. So I'm a big fan of the signing. I want to see how the contract is structured. Did they add any void years to the end to try and, because they can only add one to spread out signing bonus money. Did they do that? Which I think would be a smart move considering how much the cap is going up and how much of that is going to come into play this year. Likely, I would project around like a 20-ish million dollar signing bonus, a minimum salary. I'd say he probably costs around five and a half million dollars on the cap, but we're not going to know that until at earliest Wednesday night, probably not until Thursday or Friday. And that could really impact how the Vikings are going to structure the rest of free agency. And yes, we're still waiting on Kirk Cousins, which is the big domino to fall in all this. But overall, I'm a big fan of the Grenard signing. I think it's You needed to get talent into the edge room. You get a guy who's going to be 27 years old when the season starts. He has a May 25th birth date. And you get young guys. This is what Kwesi Dofo has been doing. Signing young talent in free agency. I think the oldest free agent he signed outside of like, hey, you're just going to be a backup depth piece was Dean Lowry. And Lowry was 28. So this is kind of right out of the Kwesi Adolfo Mensa playbook. And... I'm a big he fan did of this sign Dave. our pro bowl long snapper. That's uh, that's not a free agent signing. That's a re-sign. Uh, so I'm not counting that. And okay. even so that's like, a, that's like a depth piece. That's not, Hey, we're going to sign you to become a next level player for the Minnesota Vikings. You are an important asset to the team, but you are not the asset to help take us over the top, which is what you want to do in free agency. When you spend big money, like Josh Oliver was a good money contract. 26 years old. Byron Murphy Jr., good money contract, 25 years old. Uh, Marcus Davenport, good money contract, 27 years old. So he's taking these signings, and 
I, I, I can't remember who it was. I think it might've been a uh, scholarship on Twitter who, who writes like these really in-depth Vikings analytics pieces. He's really good at it too. He talked about how in baseball, uh, when the advent of analytics really became popular and started revolutionizing the sport, they thought the peak in major league baseball was like 30, 31 years old. Well, they soon realized it was like 26 to 28 where you were really hitting that peak. So Holy I'm curious. Shit. I don't mean to break it, but Mr. Shadow put it out. Kirk Cousins officially signing with the Falcons on a four-year deal. Four? Four. No way! Two years guaranteed. Wow. Wow. Holy crap! Four years. All right, well... (sighs) <sighs> and of course his agent Mike McCarty is the one to put it out yeah he, he put out at all of them well listen Kirky boy is gone and we're gonna we'll have that conversation once we finish up Grenard <laughs> Mac <laughs> interesting hey straw hat thank you for the super chat we appreciate that very very much yep Kirk did it Yep. I can't believe I can't believe he signed for four years. Four years. Good for Kirk. (laughs) That's that's truly incredible. And and you know what? Let's let's start having the conversation. Grenard, good signing. I give it a B plus to A minus, really depending on how the structure is. I think the structure is gonna determine for me whether it's that B plus or A minus. Let's I also care about how Grenard's going to fit in and develop into that cornerstone piece that we just signed him at. I think it'll be a good deal overall, but we never know until we see him on the field. So, yes, I agree. B mm-hmm. plus. Not bad. Yeah. And I, I think it's good. Um, I this, this is a... This is a really difficult one for the Minnesota Vikings. Look, you just lost your starting quarterback, and this isn't a starting quarterback. Like, you didn't lose Case Keenum. Like, you lost Kirk Cousins, who for six years, no matter what you thought of him, and he, he was good. He was a good football player. And I think that was that was evident throughout the course of his time with the with the Minnesota Vikings and Look, it didn't work. He was supposed to be a mercenary, and he wasn't. He didn't end up doing that for you because you wanted him to come in and win a Super Bowl. Look, it didn't work. It didn't happen. But he played really good football. In the last two years, it looked like he was the quarterback that was supposed to happen for the Minnesota Vikings when they brought him in. He looked the part. He looked comfortable. He looked like he was believed in by the coaching staff. He didn't have Mike Zimmer like beating him down year after year, game after game in press conferences, just belittling him. And you look at all these different factors. It's those, those things all matter, but the Vikings wanted to move in a different direction. They wanted to move for a younger quarterback and now they're going to have to, they're going to bring in a quarterback with some form of youth and they're going to get one in the draft. Now, here's the caveat. We're going to have to figure out, Dave, does that mean that they are going to have to trade up? Are they going to be able to trade up? What conversations has Quasi Dopamenta had? I want to know those answers because the conversations that he's had are, are going to be really, really key in determining what the future is for the Vikings team right now. We're going to know more as time goes on, but we don't know everything right now. All we know is that Kirk Cousins has officially agreed to a four-year contract with the Atlanta Falcons, um, and it, it shouldn't be too big of a surprise. We kind of knew this was coming, but I we don't know the details. We just know four years. I think, Dave, you said two years guaranteed. Um, I haven't seen any contract details come in yet. That's going to be... It was put out by his agent on Twitter. Well... Yeah, but uh, the only thing I've seen from his agent is that it's that he's signed. Uh-huh. Um, just a four-year deal. I haven't seen anything on guarantees. I haven't seen anything right. on money. I only saw the one on the 
two years guaranteed. But it depends on the money. And we'll get more on that as the day goes on, I'm sure. And then as the week goes on. Yeah. No, we you absolutely can't sign can. Until Wednesday, and then it has to go to the NFL. It's all got to be approved. Mm-hmm. There's a whole process that all that rolls through. And then it'll hit Players Association website, I believe, is where it gets stashed. And then OTC and the other cap site will put out the specifics. Now, there'll probably be some leak stuff before then, but that's the general process. Mm hmm. And luckily for me, I was smart enough to pre write a piece. So I just have to fill in a couple details. Holy crap. I can't oh. believe it finally happened, Dave. It finally hey, happened. Do that, I'm going to have to edit this stuff on YouTube to add him to this show. <laughs> it's, uh, hey, it yeah. is what it is. That is, look, th- this is, this is wild. It's all happening in real time. And, but you are a hundred percent correct. The Vikings right now do not have a starting quarterback, right? There's not one on the roster, unless you want to call Mullins that mm-hmm. there, the league knows and has known. It's not been a big secret that they're going to go for a quarterback in the draft. So they're sitting at 11 and very well, most likely have to trade up to get said quarterback. If they want one of the top four guys so the price of that probably just went up that's probably the quarterback tax as we call it when you're trading Mm -hmm. up in the draft that just went up now we heard way back in mobile that you know the seed was planted with new england well we don't know if that seed will come to fruition and i'm sure Quasi, if he was smart, was throwing seeds all around the top into that draft board to get ready to say, hey, we want your spot. What's it going to take? And we're we're going to have to hopefully, hopefully we find out soon. Hey, maybe, you know, later on Wednesday or something, there's an announcement. The Vikings trade with the New England Patriots, blah, 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 blah. And we know we're picking there. If not... We're going to, it'll take us all the way to the draft and we'll sit there on Thursday night going, all right, when are they going to move up? It's going to be fascinating to watch. And for those of you joining one, um, I apologize for being on my phone, but this is an absolutely crazy time. Grateful that you chose to join us here today. Obviously there are a lot of other people uh, doing this as well, but we're grateful to have you here. Like comment, subscribe. You're going to get a lot more of this. You're going to anytime the Vikings make a big signing, we are going to go live and we're going to have those conversations and you just get a bonus one joining us for the uh, signing of Jonathan Gennard and then Kirk Cousins choosing to sign with the Atlanta Falcons. Um, look, this is, this is a big shift for the Minnesota Vikings. It's obvious. Let's have this conversation. It's obvious the whole organization wanted him back. Kirk decides to leave because in his mind, he wanted the full guarantees he wanted. It wasn't about the money. It's, this quote is it's not about the dollars. It's about what the dollars stand for. And to him, that means I want guarantees. I will like, he'll take less average annual value to get more guaranteed cash in his pocket. So if a guy offers you a hundred million dollars, only 50 million guaranteed guy two offers you 85, but all of it guaranteed, you may take the 85. Cause no matter what you're walking away with $85 million. So to me, that matters in this context. And that matters with Kirk cousins. That matters when you're having this discussion, but the entire organization seemed to want him back. The only one that was really in Quasi did too, but he's like, it has to make sense for us. And it didn't. And now Whereas Harrison Smith last year took a pay cut. So he can continue yeah. believing in the team. Yeah. Um, Diana Rossini from the athletic reporting that the Vikings are likely to go after Sam Darnold to play quarterback. I get it. We'd heard I those hate rumors. It. I hate it. I think Sam Darnold sucks. I'd rather just roll with Nick Mullins. And I think I'm in the minority on that. I'm intrigued by Justin Fields. Uh, Fields was not good in Chicago, but they also put him in a disaster zone with really poor surroundings and an offensive coordinator that didn't know how to scheme up plays. The play designs on a lot of those, you want to use good spacing where you have like guys high and low in like a certain area of the field, utilizing levels, your short, intermediate and high 
utilizing that proper spacing. He didn't. There are multiple uh, play concepts where guys end up in the same spot. That doesn't do you any good because then it's like playing a game of 500 in the backyard and you throw 500 dead or alive and you just throw it as high as you possibly can. That, that doesn't help. So like, I don't really know if fields can ever be anything, but I know Darnold never will be, but he, he did look to be improved in the short time that he had with the San Francisco 49ers. So I kind of get it. Uh, I kind of get that. Hey, he has this baseline where he can be solid enough. Um, and it, what's really interesting is uh, the Vikings host the Atlanta Falcons mm-hmm. this year. It will host them, which is incredible. Um, yeah, he, down there, he'll get to play against the Falcons or against us and against Washington, if I do believe correctly. There's going to be mm-hmm. some grudge matches. Yeah. <sighs> Man, what, we've been waiting for this day for so long, Dave. It's absolutely wild that we're finally here. Um, that also means that the Vikings cap situation, as far as Kirk Cousins, will not change. It will be twenty point five million in dead cap this year. Mm-hmm. And now, now the biggest uh, hurdle right now is what happens with Daniel Hunter. Kirk mm-hmm. is gone. That means the Vikings could still bring back Daniel Hunter. There was always the ability to bring back both and sign another big time free agent. Everything matters with structure. So the Vikings could be in a situation where they could have that. They could have their cake and eat it too. Kirk is gone. The quarterback position is going to be in flux for a little bit. They're probably going to, I would imagine they're probably going to try and lure Donald with like a five to $10 million a year contract loaded with incentives. Like, Hey, you get like a million dollars per win that you start kind of thing to, Hey, you can make a lot of extra money. If you play really well, that's how a lot of these bridge kind of quarterback deals work. You get money if you play well. So I'm curious how that's going to work out, but yeah, this is going to be a fascinating, even more fascinating off season. The Kirk cousins era is over and we're going to have a ton more on it tonight. Uh, It's going to be, it, it's going to be, it's going to be a fun show tonight. Let me tell you, Dave, I'm going to have a lot of beer on the show tonight. <laughs> well, I it's going to be breaking good. Out the tequila. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to lie. I almost uh, left camera and went and grabbed a beer when you broke that news because it's a big deal. Um, oh, it's a huge deal. <sighs> Now, yeah, 10 it, years from now or so, we'll probably be welcoming Kirk Cousins back into the Ring of Honor because he mm-hmm. did finish second highest in stats, something he's very good at for the Vikings. But as of right now, he is now going to be an Atlanta Falcon and uh, agreed to terms to a four-year contract. We'll get the details later as they come out, and we're going to have fun. Mm-hmm. And L.A. Nope says he couldn't be more excited for the draft. I agree, L.A. I agree. Oh, I can't wait for the draft. And sorry, I'm in the midst of doing five million different things. I still have to write a bunch of stuff for Vikings Wire here later today. Look, the Vikings are in a massive shift. I will say that. I think Bo Nix is not the franchise quarterback. Um, I think Michael Penix maybe could be. I, I That's possible. Um, I, I think they're going to do everything they can to try to move up. I think by not being more aggressive with Kirk, I also, here's my other theory. They knew they were screwed when it came to Kirk Cousins because there's no way you pound out a four-year deal this quickly when it comes to a guy like him. You, the, I think they knew oh, that he was already been working on this for a long time. Mm-hmm. They've been working on it for a while since the combine. So that is, it is what it is. And all the best to Kirk cousins, all the best to his family. They're going to be in Atlanta where Julie is from. Um, mm-hmm. Apparently there was a Reddit post earlier today that said uh, um, they knew uh, Kirk's um, snowplow removal guy. And he told him that, uh, 
he was no longer his services were no longer necessary oh that's oh. tremendous it's tremendous content dave it's uh, it's phenomenal mary let me know when and i will uh, enjoy something with you oh yeah we we will be drinking on the show tonight responsibly because we don't have to drive anywhere we're in our homes and i still and, gotta click the buttons <laughs> yep with a lot of fun so hey you know what if like we already got a five dollars super chat if we can get if we can get 30 dollars more in super chats i i will rip a few shots tonight and we will have a little <laughs> extra fun i've got a bunch of bourbon that needs to be drank I will I will just line up some shots and I'll rip them like I'm in a frat house. We'll we'll have a good time tonight, guys. Uh-huh. We will have a good time. Oh, apparently the Philadelphia Eagles are getting Saquon Barkley. Oh. Yeah, I which, heard that rumor that that may happen. They were very interested. So Anyways, with that, what do we say, buddy? Skull Vikings, and we will see you tonight at 6 at the absolute latest. If something else breaks, we will see you earlier than that. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss a damn thing. Skull Vikings. Like, subscribe, and ring the bell to get notifications. It helps us grow this community. And we all love our Minnesota Vikings. And on behalf of Tyler Fornis and myself, Dave Stefano, thank you so dearly for watching The Real Forno Show. Skull, everyone! <laughs>